I am a big fan of small projects like tiny toys, mug rugs, hats, cowls, things that I can finish quickly with large gauge looms. In fact, the last blanket that I designed, I used a 24 peg loom, created a couple of panels and sold them together. Most of my projects are done using one of the four looms from the set and on occasion, I'll use a flower loom. But when it was time to do a full size blanket, I decided it was time to pull out the S loom. Hey there, it's Denise from Lumahead.com and in this video, I want to tell you 10 things I think you need to know about the S loom, some folks called an Afghan loom. And if you stay till the end, I'm going to give you some bonus information I think you'll find useful and interesting. All right, so let's start with that first item and it's the fact that these looms have different colors different materials but what's most important is that peg so we'll look at the plastic ones they're generic uh, they come in different colors but they're basically the same design kb has its own loom and it is different even though it looks just the same as the other ones you have the cindy wood loom which is a wooden loom and is very unique and has some awesome features all right so let's look at the plastic ones this is my knitting loom what's funny about the peg it's rounded at the top and it's actually two pieces if you look here you'll see some glue that's because the top part came off of the bottom which was very stressful and scary midway through my project on the KB loom, what you'll find that is different is that this peg is very narrow. Some folks will complain that it drops their stitches. I think it makes the knit off, especially when doing a purl, super easy and I like it. The Cindy Wood, I think of all the peg designs, it is the best one. It has everything you want in your peg. And this particular piece right here is called a wedge. And we will revisit this piece at the end of the video. The next one is a feature they all share and that is continuous pegs. And this makes it very easy to mess up your project because the beginning of the loom looks exactly the same as the end. They don't have distinguishing features. And so if you're not careful, you end up with like an adult cocoon, like a swaddle blanket. So in order to avoid doing that, I suggest two things. One, that you use different color stitch markers at the beginning and in the end, uh, and avoid using at a minimum the last peg, if not more, and marking that peg as well. Makes it super easy when you're working and you get distracted. Another thing that's different about these looms is that they have multi-directional pegs. In other words, some are on the outside and some are on the inside. If you're used to regular looms, you know that they're the little indentations, they're all facing the outside of the loom. It doesn't matter where you're working, they're all in the same direction. That's not the case when you're working with these S-shaped looms. You have some facing the outside of the loom and others facing on the inside. This makes for a very awkward method of knitting so you could start off with one position while you're knitting on the outside the looms are so large um, you find that you have to turn them um, to be able to manage your knitting you have to have awkward positions so as long as you're aware of this it's okay and it does work different on a table than say a sofa or a bed all right number four there are over a hundred pegs on all of these looms in my case i think i had like 137 or 138 so i suggest a simple pattern i picked a waffle stitch which only has three stitches and four rows making it a super easy one and by the way stay tuned for this pattern because it is coming soon all right number five is that if you're using stitch markers you can make a mistake and knit those markers into your project i really like the rubber band markers i try to make sure that they're a different color from the loom in the project but they still get knitted off and you 
have to pay attention because they will keep your project from feeding through so just cut them and then you can pull them out later it's not a big deal especially when you use the rubber band markers another thing that you need to be concerned about is that you can get confused as far as the direction and turn before you're supposed to which will give you a gap in your knitting like right here and you should be able to identify where this happens so that you can take it off and re-knit you can see where there's like an extra line in the fabric that is not that's here but not in the other side so you would have to undo your stitch and re-knit so number seven is that i suggest you know how to undo your stitches without dropping them now i did a video a while ago on how to do this but real quick i'm just going to show you one short clip and basically you remove the stitch from the peg and then you go and look for the the stitch that is under that one that you removed and remount that bottom stitch and you want to do that before um, unraveling because you don't want to drop your stitch and like I said, this is an older video. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in seeing the whole video on this subject. The next item I want you to consider is the fact that this project becomes very large and very heavy, especially if you're using chunky yarn. I use ch chunky and halfway through my project where it was about 24 to 30 inches, at that midpoint, it already weighed almost two and a half pounds. So you have to keep that in mind as you make decisions on how you're going to work your project. So if it gets heavy, I found that I needed more protection for my hands and my fingers. And so this is number nine. Uh, a while ago, I designed a glove protector because the palm of my hand would hurt from so much knitting well it got to the point where that wasn't enough and i needed a compress compression sleeve this is a fingerless one and while doing this project i found that not only my hands hurt but my fingers were hurting and so it was time to graduate to a compressive sleeves that also protected all of my fingers and I will put link in the description for this product. I found it very helpful. All right, number 10 is I want you to be aware that Cindy Wood, who did not sponsor this video by the way, has 10 variations of this S loom and that their S looms have that little wedge that I was talking about and that wedge you can put it anywhere in the loom and it makes it an adjustable loom. So you see that there are 10 variations. All right, here's your bonus. You don't have to use an S loom in order to knit a full size blanket. In fact, here's Lori Shu, uh, an awesome designer. She knits using a round loom. I know that you're looking at it and it looks outrageously huge but it is an option and it's more of what you guys are used to so that's it guys i hope the information was useful don't forget that my waffle stitch blanket will be coming out soon so stay tuned for that thanks for watching remember to share if you haven't already done so subscribe and come back and loom with me again